batteries, ohmic devices, and Ohm's law. So batteries have a property, a physical property called electromotive force or EMF. Sometimes we use the symbol uh, epsilon and it is measured in SI units of volts. So that's the property of the battery. It's actually the electric potential difference of the battery when it's not connected to anything. Most household batteries have an EMF of 1.5 volts while others have an EMF of, of 9 volts. Resistors and other ohmic devices have a property called resistance. And so we use a symbol capital R for resistance. It has SI units of ohms. Use the Greek letter omega for that. And typically we can determine the resistance of a resistor or other ohmic device with based on the physical construction of that device. And so we can, here's the formula for it. Um, rho L over A. So the resistance of that object would be based on the resistivity. Use Greek letter rho for that. And then L is the length measured in meters, and A would be the cross-sectional area in square meters. So, so you've got a wire, and we know what it's made out of, and we know its length, then we can uh, calculate, uh, it, and we know its uh, diameter or cross-sectional area, then we can calculate its resistance. Okay, that's considered a property of that object. Okay. And then the way to put these concepts together of EMF and resistance is with Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is an empirical relationship. It's not a, actually a fundamental law of physics. It says that the potential difference across an ohmic device is equal to the current through that device times the resistance of that device. Okay. Now keep in mind not all devices obey Ohm's law and uh, not all devices that obey Ohm's law obey, obey it over an enormous range of applied potential difference. So you shouldn't expect something with 50 million volts uh, to obey, necessarily to obey Ohm's law. Okay, it's an empirical relationship over a reasonable range of applied electric potential differences. Okay, so let's put all together an example problem. So I'm gonna uh, solve number 27 in the first edition of the text. And so we're given that the EMF is 0.7 volts. We have a, we have a battery, that it happens to have that property. We're also given uh, that we basically connect that battery to a wire. So here's a, a fairly primitive drawing. Here's our battery. We connect it to a wire. Okay, don't try this at home unless the uh, wire is very thin or the wire is very long. Yeah, you could start a fire. Um, but the length is gi given as 100 meters. So obviously the picture is not to scale. And the diameter is given as 0 0.10 millimeters. Okay, so a very thin, very long wire, and it's made of copper, so we can look up the resistivity. So basically we have the physical dimensions, we know what it's made out of, it's copper, and so we should be able to throw numbers into here and calculate the resistance. So let's do that first. So uh, resistance will be, I don't really need to do any algebra here, just uh, chuck in numbers. I could look up the resistivity of copper. It's 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. Okay, that's considered a property of the material, uh, the resistivity. And then the length is 100 meters. And then I divide by the cross section layer. You got to do a little bit of geometry here. Pi times the radius. So I divide this by 2 and um, and convert to SI units of meters. So it's uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. And I square that. And so I find that this particular copper wire, okay, it has nothing to do with the battery, uh, the wire itself has a resistance of 216 ohms. Okay, so now that I know the resistance of the wire and I know the EMF of the battery, I can calculate the current using Ohm's law. So this number right here just becomes the um, the EMF of the battery, and I can just solve for I there. So just a tiny bit of algebra. Current will be potential difference divided by resistance. So 0.7 divided by 216. I throw that into my calculator, and I get 3.23 times 10 to the minus 
3 amps. So that's a testable prediction. Uh, we could use an ammeter to measure the, uh, the current through this wire, and um, we, could, we could test this, uh, test this prediction. Okay? So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.